Hi, I'm the Kelp the Cricket Psychic Reader, also known as Chuck Cochran, owner of thesilverwillow.com. Today, we're going to discuss some different forms of scrying. Yes, using crystal balls, mirrors, bowls, and cauldrons, I'm going to give some tidbits to you that I hope will be helpful for your scrying needs. I've always been fascinated with the crystal ball, ever since I saw The Wizard of Oz as a child. When I got a crystal ball, I realized you got to spend a lot of time with it to get really good at scrying. But if you take some of my practical tips, hopefully you'll be scrying. It's a lot easier than you think. I like to use clear quartz crystal balls, and this is a good size one here. And as you notice, it's not crystal clear. You want to have cracks. You want inclusions, phantoms, ghosts. You want uh, imperfections because they give you something to gaze at. But clear quartz across the board is the most popular for scrying. I also have with me today a couple of other crystals. I have rose quartz and I have smoky quartz. When I'm not using my crystal balls, I do like to keep them packed away. I keep them in a low traffic area. You certainly would, would not want to put your crystal ball on display in the living room if it's a high traffic area. If you want to get good results with scrying, you have to treat the crystal as a sacred object. Have respect for it, and when you're not using it, keep it someplace safe. One of the first things you should do when you get a crystal is study it. Turn it around, look through it, hold it, meditate with it. You can even sleep with it in your bed. I encourage people to work with their crystal a lot, especially if they're going to be doing a lot of reading on crystals. It's just a good time to get familiar with your crystal. And one way to do that is actually hold it quite often. When you feel that you're ready to start scrying, there's a couple of different things you can do. I prefer to use candlelight and I like to be in a dimly lit area. I like my focus to go right onto the crystal ball. This is a lighted box that I'm using today, and this will light up any crystal that you put on it. Now it is proper um, to sit, be well grounded. You don't want to be sick, you don't want to have a headache, and you want to be in a really good mood when you want to scry. And one of the first things I like to do is light a few candles, sit and relax, and then bring your eyes down a little bit, closing out everything visual except for the ball that you're reading. And by softening the gaze, as they call it, and closing your eyes down, you're focusing just on the ball. And when you focus on just the ball, I find the easiest way to get results is to stare at the center of the ball. And with your eyes coming down and you maintain a focus on the center of the ball, it will get as we call cloudy, milky, or smoky. It will get uh, foggy-ish. And this is a good sign that something's going to be revealed. There are different ways of reading the crystal ball. And what we see in them is very difficult to interpret. I, it's been my experience that when I see a symbol inside the crystal ball, like a key, perhaps that's a new job, a new car, or a new home. And if you're not familiar with the symbols that you're seeing and how to interpret them, you could easily look them up in a dream dictionary. I use a, a journal and I write down everything that I see in the journal. I also like to keep track of when I'm scrying. I am most accurate around the full moon, and that's the perfect time to scry. Another way of scrying is after you're gazing into the ball and you've seen some images, you can also feel the energy of the ball. This is very beneficial when someone comes to you for a scrying session. They would literally hold the ball for a while and put their energy into it. Then I, in turn, would read it and I would also tap into the energy and the crystal's energy by holding it. When I see images, they come very quickly. It is like watching a black and white silent film for about three seconds. It, it goes by really, really quick. And I want to let you know that sometimes when you see something negative, it can actually have a very positive meaning. 
for instance, if you saw a casket, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is death. But death can also be the end of something, and it could be the end of turmoil in your life. Sometimes I see children, sometimes I see people that have passed over, and sometimes I see things that I do not know how to interpret. So I jot it down, and sometimes a month or two down the road, it makes a lot of sense to you. So I would encourage everyone that wants to learn to scry with their crystal balls, you want to cleanse it, you want to wash it, you want to build a relationship with it, hold it, talk to it, meditate with it, get to know your crystal. And when you first start out, try to limit your sessions for about 20 minutes a day. If you go any further than that, you'll get bored and frustrated. Take it from me, I was there. 20 minutes a day, probably in about two or three weeks, you should have some good results. And once you start getting results from scrying, you won't stop. I've been scrying for years. Another popular method of scrying is the scrying mirror. And I have one here that I've had for a long time, which is a black mirror. If you wanted to be thrifty and creative, you could simply get a pane of glass or an old picture frame and spray paint the back black. Nice flat black. Once you have a scrying mirror, it is a black surface. There are different ways that you can use it. I personally like to lay it flat on the table and it becomes a hole, becomes a well if you will. Again, just like with the crystal, soften your eyes down and stare at the center of the mirror. It will get very foggy. It will appear that there is smoke over the mirror, a gray mist if you will. This is a good sign that something's going to be revealed. Now some people don't like to look at themselves directly in the mirror. So if you're going to have your mirror sitting up or on a wall, you can gaze at it without seeing yourself directly in it. Or, if you want to be daring, look at yourself face on. You may see things over your shoulders and around you. I find that laying it flat is very good when I do house parties and seances. It gives me something to focus on and other people that are sitting around the table can also scry with you at the same time. Now in the event that you don't have a crystal ball or a scrying mirror, one of the best ways to do some scrying is to get a black bowl or in my case of course I use a cauldron. Take a cauldron and fill it with water. Try to avoid tap water. Spring water is good, but I like to go down to the beach and get fresh running water. Usually on an incoming um, wave is always good. I like something fresh that's got some light, life in it. And you place the cauldron, just like the scrying mirror, before you. Soften your eyes and stare at the reflection of the water. This is very, very helpful and very, very useful if you do this outside on a full moon night. I would guarantee you'll get results. Also, when you start to see things in your crystals, very important to continue to journalize them because for me, when I see something in the left part of the crystal, that's coming in. If I see something on the right part of the crystal, that's going out. If I see something in the back, that is someone on the other side. If I see something in the center or in the front, this is something of importance. So if I was to see a key, perhaps that means I'm getting a new car very soon. But if I see a shadowy figure in the back, that could be someone that has passed away. Now, please, hold your crystals, talk to them, play with them, light incense, do the candles. If you're going to be doing candles, make sure they're not flickering too much. You want to be reading the crystal and not the candle. These are just a few helpful hints. I've been a professional scryer for quite a while now, and I do enjoy teaching classes on this. And I hope this will inspire you to start gazing at your crystal, your mirror, or even a cauldron filled with water. And for more information on scrying, you can check me out at thesilverwillow.com. This is the Celtic Cricket. Thanks for watching.